If it wasn't for the leap game, her and her husband would have been here. <laughs> and we're competing with game two. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Okay. It's amazing. It's like an open zoo, but uh, in a natural environment, it's, you can just find this very fitting. It's amazing. I just thought of being able to get up close and personal with penguins. It's just a fantastic experience. Ever since I was a kid, six years old, I wanted to come here. Come here. It's, it's great. What well, hasn't been a while? <laughs> Every morning, it's like Christmas. I just love this job. <laughs> The Quark Expedition leaders have made it very comfortable and extremely informative. They're really easy to deal with, to contact. Seven ups are very informative and just getting the maximum amount out of these really incredible experiences. I think one of the reasons that Quark is the leader of solar travel is the team that we get to work with. Um, every day I'm grateful for the people that are uh, beside me and behind me. There's a lot of support. We're all equally passionate about the polar region, so to be able to share that with passengers is our, our real joy. <laughs> I think it's so amazing to meet other nationalities on the world and to have the same experiences and dining together, I, I, I was down there taking the tours together. I think it's unbelievable. It doesn't matter where you're from. So I got a girl connected from here. Totally. It's been a long dream. This is my last time. So we made it all now. This one takes more time. So what, what, what more can we ask for? A wonderful day. We knew how one of the Antarctic was, but to add South Georgia and Portland just was, you know, especially South Georgia was the icing on the cake. <laughs> Falklands is one of those places to see before you die. It's a privilege to be able to be here and to see it for yourself. It's pretty special. I feel like you're just very, very, very good to be here. That's it. Yeah, it's just uh, not what I expected. It's more And it's probably that's when I always So I believe to come here and find the world's place where she does sustainable tourism. Yes. Yeah. So we have no idea. And we have, we're pretty small too. Like, I don't know. Yes. 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 Yes.
Although you don't always need an excuse for your part of the time. culture, we have travel, and cars. So focusing on the car enthusiasts, but giving them a really good travel experience and kind of seeing the places we go. Um, so the Germany one, this will be our first run of it this September. So we're doing 730, uh, 9, 10 couples, including us. Um, we've got a portion of 11, like a new 9,000 for everybody. We're basically doing like, uh, drive into um, Monday, Frankfurt, so we're to transfer into yeah. yeah. Stuttgart, and that's 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 Stuttgart, Stuttgart, Stuttgart. We've got two nights in Baden-Baden. Yeah. Baden -Baden. We head from there down to yeah. Lake Lucerne. We're staying at the hotel. Um, it's now on Lake Lucerne. There's been a couple of days ago. So they're all five days ago. And then they initially start restaurants for a couple of the meals. And it's like an afternoon. Um, so after, and then we leave there. We drive from Lake Lucerne. Mm -hmm. We go down to the uh, two Alpine passes. And then we end up in Lichtenstein. Um, at a wicked hotel there. And then we leave from there. We go to the Neuschein Castle on our way to Munich. And we have a couple nights in Munich. Like, we see Dash House on the way out of Munich. Uh, and then back to 
to the card and then uh, transfer back to the right back. So it's seven days. Um, seven days. Our center is just orange. That's not as good. That's a lot of work. That's so fun. Yeah, so trying to really kind of balance a lot of the stuff we had to do. So you're doing that expand all again. Where did you end up staying? In oh, the the yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, mm, right now, I'm mean, almost finished in two weeks. I'll have all the pricing no. finalized. We're going to be doing testing in the end of um, April. No, I don't. And that's just me. It was like four months. Uh, Ferrari, like, uh, Royal Tim Buffaro. Oh, and fine. it's going to be like a test drive out for It's amazing. So I need to check everybody that participates in the project. Just because it's been so long now. Yes. Eight cars. Okay. 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 I get a bit for the ride. Yeah. So whether it's uh, a now is the time to get outside and explore, to travel in style and comfort with technology leading the way. Secure the Kia Seltos today because there's no time like now. Kia, moment that inspires. That's so cool. It's like four of them, I guess. Mm -hmm. I will sit and I got your seat here, Tim. Hello, everyone. Right? Click and talk. Click and talk. Great. So you just you have all the red notes. I know. And then where is that? I'm gonna go down to Austin next week. Oh, amazing! Never been. I've never been. So it's amazing. A little bit of a, a, a conference there. And then I've taken the fall week off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Guy and I are going to do a few nights in Austin, yeah. drive to San Antonio, mm -hmm. and then go to um, Franken's, um, Fredericksburg, a German yeah. settlement in Texas. Super random, super cute, and just do like some fun things like that in a road trip. So for over a week, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And um, in uh, Fredericksburg, there's like fun. 
t-shirts that are like prosteal, like, like kind of mixing. Yeah, yeah there's like, like I don't get a schnitzel, yeah, yeah, yeah like some yeah, cute terms like that. Because like I guess a lot in the 1800s, yeah, there were yeah, a lot of European settlements, and so the Germans were coming over. And yeah, yes. And so it's so neat seeing all these little communities like on your way to San Antonio or just a little bit on the outskirts. So with great architecture and heritage building and stuff. So I'm really, really like, well, like, like a different. Yeah, so I'm totally different. Maybe we'll get started. Really? Maybe we'll get get started. At some people have stuck. Had one text for Greg, but it's late now. Promise you one hour. And I'm hearing so much about Fairmont properties. I'm getting love their duvets, their beds, and their service. The so great. Haven't made to the gold floor yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> it's a delight. It's <laughs> so good. Anyways, guys, we're going to get started. I think it's uh, a pleasure, you guys, for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, wanted to introduce Kara from Quark Expedition. She's our expert tonight, someone who knows everything there is to know about going to Antarctica because we know it's a destination where people have so many questions yes. and it's not something you can just choose off the shelf and so our, it's our, our pleasure to provide you with hopefully some answers to those questions and inspiration for you and those you know to travel to the seventh continent. So, uh, thanks, thanks Jackie. I'm so grateful I'm here. Thanks so much for coming everyone. It's fun to gather and to talk about travel but it's also fun to gather and talk about um, the polar regions in particular. So I just thought I'd start with a little inspirational video. as Jackie was saying, my name is Kara Matthew, and I've actually been with Cork Expeditions for almost 15 years now. I have what I call polar fever, and I think I can say that safely now that we're out of the past few years, because honestly, the polar regions takes you in and really inspires everyone to keep going back. They, it really takes a hold of people when they start traveling there. And so with Cork Expeditions, you might have never heard of us, and we've been in business for over 31 years. And we only do polar travel exclusively. And we work specifically with partners like Jackie um, to share these amazing experiences um, with their clients. And so with you knowing a little bit about Quark now, we're on small little ships, but we only do the polar regions. We only travel to the Arctic and Antarctica. We don't go anywhere else in the world. We're specialists in these regions. So we are uncompromisingly polar, I like to say. Try that saying 10 times fast after you've had a couple cocktails. But we are uncompromisingly polar. We're polar exclusively. That's a really big differentiator between us and a lot of the operators uh, in these regions. We were the first company to take passengers to the North Pole in 1991. And then we were the first company to also circumnavigate Antarctica with passengers. So Antarctica being the fifth largest continent on the planet. It's a pretty great uh, first for Cork as well. So with us being specialists in these areas, we are in small little vessels. So we're small little ships, all under 200 passengers. And it's really important when you're thinking of going to these regions to pick a smaller vessel. Because as soon as you get ships that are 250, 300, 500 passengers, not everyone can get off at the same time. And so it's really nice to be able to be on these little ships and maneuver in these really remote locations of the planet and being able to get off the ship as much as possible and into the heart of the destination. So that is our brand new uh, ultramarine ship. She actually was built and just came out last year. Um, and so it's really exciting to have her in our fleet. We've always been operating helicopters in the polar regions for over 31 years, but this, this actual ship has two helipads. And we have two Airbus 145 helicopters on her, which I'm super excited about. 
Um, and I, I just love the fact that we are now able to go further and farther into these regions. And with these helicopters, which we'll talk about a little bit about later, is they actually go over uh, water as well, open water and land. And that's really important because a lot of helicopters aren't actually certified and able to go over open sea. And so that's a really big differentiator with us as well. And every guest, when they're booking on the ultramarine to areas like Antarctica, but also <laughs> Greenland and the Canadian Arctic, like Nunavut, uh, we have flight sightseeing included for each guest. So when you come on board with us to some of those locations, you'll be able to have a minimum of a 15 to 20 minute flight seeing excursion, uh, which is included. It is not an additional cost with Cork Expeditions. And dogs, unfortunately, are not allowed on board, but I would love that. Like, hello, he's so cute. We have a little dog in the audience here for everyone at home watching. But we have ships that are luxurious, um, like the World Explorer as well, 172 uh, guests, another small intimate ship. And then we have a tried and true expedition vessel, the Ocean Adventure. Uh, but definitely the Ultramarine and the World Explorer are more of those premium ships if you're looking for those creature comforts. Uh, earlier, I loved talking about the Fairmont um, and hearing some of you discuss those some properties. And that's, I always find that I loved hiking in Banff, but I love coming back to the Fairmont at the end of a long day hiking and getting into the duvet and, and having a great glass of wine with the fireplace. So that's what I love about these levels of premium and luxury ships now going to the polar regions with Cork because you don't have to sacrifice your creature comforts when you come with us to the polar regions. But a really big difference between Cork expeditions and a lot of the other operators going into these regions is our expedition team. And I can honestly say that this is one of the reasons why I've been with this company for so long because they constantly deliver time and time again, life-changing experiences for our guests. And I was just with some of our expedition leaders last night. Um, they came to Toronto in between seasons to have a bit of an expedition leader summit. And I had the privilege of uh, hanging out with a few more of them and getting to know them even more intimately. It's one expedition team member to five guests. It's the lowest ratio in the industry. That's not for some of you who are cruisers. That's not cabin crew or ship crew. That is specifically our expedition team alone. And what I love is the fact that they're also sitting with all of you like these, this at dinners and lunches, sharing stories about where they've been, where they've lived, the research that they're doing. So we have glaciologists, geologists, uh, historians. I thought polar history was so boring until I started traveling with us. And then our expedition team members and our historians are bringing so much polar history to life. So I really do feel like our expedition team is a huge highlight <laughs> Uh, for traveling with us. We also have an excellent program called the Cork Academy program. And a lot of other operators are actually looking to us for this program because we train all of our expedition teams specifically. So we're reaching the highest levels of safety in these areas. So a lot of other operators are looking to us for this Cork Academy training program that no other polar operator uh, currently has. So that's very, very exciting. But I like to say, who travels with us? Because some of you are probably still thinking, oh, is this for me? Is this not for me? And so what type of guests should come with us? And if you're the adventurer, which I think all of you are, being on the ship in general and being in these really remote locations is adventurous enough. But what you'll share, I'll share with you later is there's kayaking opportunities, stand-up paddleboarding. If you're a learner, if you love learning about history, I heard someone just came back from the south of France so nice to be able to go to Italy and see museums and have some of that cultural experiences or going to the UK and seeing the castles. If you're that type of traveler, you would love coming with Cork Expeditions, as well as the checklister, maybe checklisting the seventh continent off your list, because that was definitely me. It was my seventh continent back in 2012. I had not stepped foot on Antarctica until February of 2012. And I went with my 66 year old aunt and we had a great time. She loved photography, going with the photographers, and she also loved coming in a Zodiac with me on an afternoon, but there were times where she stayed on board and loved witnessing the scenery and the wildlife from the comfort of the ship itself. And then I would go out with the long hikers and then come back and have dinner with her. So there really is something for every type of traveler. So even if you're thinking of some friends to come with you, there's something for, uh, for everyone. And then we have the escapist, people who just want to disconnect. If you love nature and being away from it all. We all have, I just experienced a lot of traffic coming to Burlington from Toronto. It's nice to unplug, unwind, not hear any traffic. I love city life and traveling cities around the world, but it, a lot of travelers that come with us 
a lot of our, our guests um, are definitely those escapists, those wellness type of travelers. So let's start going to the bottom of the world, to Antarctica. I love maps now more than ever, just to give some uh, context to where we're traveling. So with Quark Expeditions, where a lot of our trips are leaving from Punta Arenas, Chile, or Ushuaia, Argentina. And so we have trips as little as eight days to Antarctica with a fly cruise program where you can skip the Drake Passage, the body of water between South America and the finger of land that is the Antarctic Peninsula. Uh, the flight takes typically about two hours. Or you can experience sailing the Drake if you're that extra adventurer that I was chatting about earlier. Uh, we have a sailing the Drake Passage from Ushuaia to Antarctica and back. And it typically takes a day and a half to two days in each direction to sail. I always call it the Drake Lake because it can be super smooth, which I have experienced. But it can also be the Drake Shake, I like to say. And you never know what to expect. But there was a day where I just, uh, you know, sat in my, stayed in my cabin, had some gravel and uh, had some ginger tea. And I didn't drink any wine that day. And I just kind of was waiting it out because uh, it did get a little bit rough. But what I love is getting out on deck on those sea days is so exciting. You never know what you're going to see in terms of wildlife. Um, an albatross, a, a great bird, the largest wingspan of any bird on the planet might actually soar counterclockwise around the vessel. So I always like to encourage all of you to get out on deck and you never know what you're going to find, whether it's a pod of dolphins when you're cruising to Antarctica or some great birds. So we have trips from eight days all the way up to 23 days and everything in between. When we start to travel to Antarctica with Cork Expeditions, it's at the end of October, all the way to the beginning of April. So it's a really long season that we're in these areas. And so there's lots to choose from depending on when you can travel, but then also what you wanna see and do. So Jackie's leading a trip um, in December and December is great because it's still fresh fallen snow, great wildlife opportunities. The penguins are actually building their nests in Antarctica to because they are laying their eggs. And they're so funny because they're stealing rocks from each other's nests. And they're getting all curious and wondering. And the, and the funny thing is, it's because they mate for one year together. So they're monogamous, generally speaking, for a year. And so the males always try and impress the females with how big the pebbles are that they bring for their nests. And, um, and so it's a really great time to go. But February and March is excellent for whale season. Uh, I grew up on the west coast of British Columbia and I love whales. There is nothing like seeing a humpback uh, whale and her calf in Antarctica in a gorgeous cove. Um, so just different months bring different things in Antarctica. Big question I get a lot that you're probably thinking is it's cold there? Like why would I want to go from southern Ontario to Antarctica um, just to experience more cold? And we're going the peak of their summer. So these months are typically the end of spring going into their summer and their early fall. So the temperatures range from about minus five to plus five. But in January and December, there were times where it was sunny and no wind. And I had my parka tied around my waist going for walks and meandering around the penguins uh, because it was so warm. So it just, it, it can even get up to a plus 10, just depending on, on the month that you're going and the weather. But in Antarctica, it's so beautiful. It's truly uh, like no other place on the planet. Um, my father is actually a retired uh, captain from an airline. And I traveled a lot since I've been a small child all the way up until an adult. And there was nowhere in the world that I had experienced like the beauty of the mountain ranges and the silence in Antarctica. Um, if you've been to Alaska and maybe or maybe you've cruised Alaskan waters, highly recommend uh, cruising fjords in, uh, in Antarctica. It's just stunning. I love snow-capped mountains, and you can witness all this from the comfort of the ship uh, with great food and cuisine, but also being able to stand on foot and actually go on the seventh continent. So Cork Expeditions is trying to get everyone out off the ship as much as possible and into the destination. So you can also expect almost about two landings per day is what we typically aim for. So again, like my aunt Lucy, if there's a day that you kind of wanted to stay on board or an afternoon because you're a bit exhausted, that's fine too. But we're trying to get out as much as possible. So we typically have breakfast on board, then get out for a morning excursion, come back and have a great lunch, and then get off the ship uh, again in the afternoon. Have a daily recap of what we've seen that day with our experts and our specialists, those expedition team members, sharing uh, what we've seen that day, but also what to expect the next day. 
And some of you might be thinking expedition. I don't know if it's for me, but really what expedition means is just expecting the unexpected. One morning we might have TBA, for instance, on, a, on an agenda because we don't know what happens. We're at the mercy of the wildlife and the weather. So it's really exciting each and every day and not two trips or any two trips are the same, which is very, very exciting. And these yellow parkas are used yours to keep. My husband shovels the driveway, not the, our little driveway and our sidewalk with those great parkas. And there is a liner included. So here, as you can see too, that gentleman there actually just has a long sleeve uh, uh, fleece on as well when you're walking around. So just depending on the day and the month. Um, but we're aiming again for two excursions a day. Um, lots of hiking and walking opportunities, depending on uh, what you'd like to do. So you definitely can get off the ship and explore as much as possible. And all different levels of hiking and walking, contemplative walks. There was an afternoon where I simply sat on a rock just to watch all the penguins come in and out of the shore. It was such a remarkable uh, experience. The penguins are definitely the stars of the show in Antarctica. And we give briefings on every landing site. So when you come with the Zodiac, the little rubber boats that we ride around in, it's kind of like a jeep, safari jeep at sea is what I like to kind of call it. It's a very similar to safari. Um, but our expedition team leader is waiting for you and will greet you at a landing site on a continental landing, for instance, and share with you like where you can go, where you can't, which wildlife you might want to avoid. But safety is our main concern, as well as wildlife is a huge priority for us. We know that this is their home and we're visitors, but the penguins don't get the memos that we have to stay 15 feet away from them. And they're so inquisitive. And one came right up to me, looked at me and then walked right in between my legs. And I thought, oh, my gosh, it was one of the most remarkable experiences looking into these eyes of this incredible uh, penguin. And so they're everywhere. We have a deli penguins that we usually see in Antarctica, chin strap penguins. Uh, that one there is a Gen 2 penguin. And they have such personality. Like uh, it's just unbelievable. It's every picture can tell a story and every video um, can definitely tell a story. So if you love wildlife, I highly recommend thinking about going to Antarctica. <laughs> And then there's seals, leopard seals, Waddell seals. So that's an example of the Zodiac where one morning or one afternoon, we might not actually go on a landing. And we might simply be in the Zodiacs with all of you. And you're maneuvering around these gorgeous icebergs, hearing the snap, crackle, and pop of the iceberg. It sounds like a, a bowl of Rice Krispies, literally, because you can just hear the snapple and pop uh, of the ice. And the ice never gets old. And it's a piece of art like this that you'll just never see again. And that will never be the same uh, piece of art with all the, all the ice. It's just absolutely stunning. And there's also the whales that I was talking about earlier. So many whales in Antarctica, a lot of them are migrating um, to Antarctica for the Antarctic summer to gather krill and, and other great um, meals. But then there's five species of orcas that typically live in Antarctica all year round. And this particular um, instance, this was not on my trip, but an orca was chasing a penguin and the penguin jumped in the Zodiac with all the guests to try and get away from the orca and save itself. Mm -hmm. And the guests were so shocked. And <laughs> the penguin was kind of like, I think I'm safer in here than in the water. And all you could just see is this orca circling, circling the Zodiac. So again, expecting the unexpected, you never know what's going to happen. So in terms of an expedition, it's always just packing a sense of adventure and open-mindedness of when we're in these really remote locations. So with the Antarctic Peninsula, we do have the fly cruise program that's eight days. So highly recommend if you're short on times, I know a lot of you have a lot of travel plans already um, and maybe, uh, or maybe you wanna see a bit more of South America. So Jackie can obviously share with you uh, going to maybe Easter Island before or after your trip or areas of um, Atacama Desert even is so beautiful. But then uh, we have the 10 and 12 day Antarctic Explorer trips where we sail across the Drake Passage in, in both directions. And then the 13-day trip, the Antarctic Peninsula, but coming back and doing Cape Horn. And so this is the itinerary that Jackie is going to be doing in December uh, because it's on the ultramarine. So you're not only getting the flight sightseeing um, with the helicopters in Antarctica, 
but on the way back, you're staying, you're uh, you're on the Cape Horn with the helicopters and the Zodiac landings. And this is just such an incredible area, not only for its beauty in Patagonia, but also the history of sailors. Like so many ships were lost around Cape Horn in the last few hundred years, just because of how dangerous rounding the horn is. So a lot of sailors like to actually do this itinerary simply um, to pay uh, homage to all the other sailors that have perished around this area in the last hundred, few hundred years. So really exciting itinerary. Um, but then if you do want a few more days on the actual peninsula, we do have crossing the circle trips. Uh, so 14 days. So it's a bit longer going into the heart of 66 degrees south. If maybe you've crossed the Arctic Circle. I don't know if any of you have been um, crossing the Arctic Circle. But it's nice to have that checklist off your list if you like. But it's kind of like an African safari again. If you want more days in the Masimara, I always set, recommend a longer trip um, to 14 days um, in Antarctica. Like some people enjoy just going for two or three days in the Masimara. I personally love staying longer in the Masimara. And I loved having more opportunities in Antarctica for landing. So just depending on what you're looking for. And then we also have the Crossing the Circle 11 Day Fly Cruise Program too. But I asked Jackie today if I could talk about the sub-Antarctic regions as well, because I can't talk about Antarctica without talking about areas that are so beautiful as well and so different than Antarctica than these sub-Antarctic regions like the Falkland Islands and South Georgia. So the Falkland Islands is home to over, <laughs> it's actually home to the largest uh, black-browed albatross, albatross colony um, in the world. And the albatross is out at sea for most of their lives, but they come back to land, to nest, and to lay their eggs, and to take care of their chicks. And again, this bird has the largest wingspan of any other bird on the planet, around approximately seven and a half feet. And it is remarkable to be in their presence um, at, again, a safe distance, so we're not scaring them. Uh, but even if you're not a birder, seeing something like this is just absolutely incredible. So the albatross can set a soar for nearly two years without landing. That's it's a great dinner topic to have and great piece of information because they're just a remarkable, remarkable bird. And then South Georgia offers um, the king penguin. So a penguin species that cannot be seen in Antarctica. So this is the second largest penguin species on the planet. And if you can pick out some of the little brown penguins, they're actually the adolescents. So naturalists thought it was a completely different penguin species years ago, but it's actually uh, the teenagers of the, <laughs> of the king penguin species. So this is an example of the zodiac that I wanted to share with you in case if some of you are thinking, can I get in and out of a zodiac? Do I even want to do something like this? But every, that, so that's our expedition team leader there, Woody on the left, and another expedition team member helping. And we're getting in and out of the Zodiac. So this is uh, South Georgia, and that's another, that's an area of um, uh, Falkland Islands right there. And that's South Georgia. It's just so beautiful. So that's not your ordinary beach. We're talking about Punta Cana earlier, and that is not Punta Cana, but it is still a gorgeous sandy beach uh, nonetheless. So I did want to share with you the fact that we do have Falkland Islands and South Georgia itineraries. If you're curious and have the time, your 16-day trips to South Georgia and Antarctica, um, as well as 20-day trips that include the Falkland, South Georgia, and Antarctica. Even in Falkland Islands, we sometimes try and have a little pub crawl um, in the Falklands, a lot of history um, in these regions too. And then we have what I call the whole kit and caboodle. Um, I'm not in the product department or the marketing team because the whole kit and caboodle probably wouldn't have gone over very well. But this one's called the Epic Antarctica Journey because it's not only the Falkland, South Georgia, but it's also crossing into the heart of the Antarctic Circle. So um, that is an option uh, if you'd like to be on a ship for, for 23 days. But again, getting off as much as possible uh, in these areas. So there are quite a few sea days in between uh, like Ushuaia. It takes about a day um, to get to the Falklands and then another day and a half or so to get to South Georgia. So there are quite a few sea days, but we fill the itinerary quite often with great lectures throughout the trip uh, with our expedition team and also again encouraging everyone to get up on the bridge, get out on deck, because um, you never know what you're going to see. And 
back in 2004, Korg Expeditions helped a group of scientists get to an emperor penguin colony and discover an emperor penguin colony. And we haven't done this itinerary since 2017, and we are bringing it back <coughs> for this November. So I know a lot of you have travel plans already, but I did want to bring up this really special itinerary where we're actually going into see an emperor penguin rookery with over 10,000 breeding pairs of emperor penguins. So if you've ever seen the March of the Penguin movie where Morgan Freeman is narrating, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend to grab a bowl, bowl of popcorn and watch it. An extraordinary experience, um, especially people um, that have been to maybe see the gorillas in Rwanda. This is another trip opportunity like that or the snow leopards. Um, but even if you haven't been to Antarctica before, it's a great place um, to explore Antarctica. So it's a 14 day trip and we're using the helicopters to get everyone off, all the guests off about a mile outside of the rookery. So we will be slowly walking in um, to the rookery because again, we're not scaring them uh, with the use of the helicopters as well. And if you see that dotted line from Buenos Aires, our ultramarine ship, which I'll talk to about in a few minutes, a lot of our ultramarine trips start actually in Buenos Aires. There's an included hotel night in, in Buenos Aires and then a charter flight down uh, to Ushuaia and back. So when you're uh, booking with Jackie, that's definitely a great added value. It's 995 US per person for the charter flight and a hotel night. Uh, but sometimes those local flights can go up um, in price. And, and, and so that's a guaranteed flight where everyone on board is on the same tr uh, flight as you. But what really sets Cork apart from the rest is our off-ship experience. Uh, we have the most robust off-ship adventure options to offer uh, in the polar regions than anyone else. So we try and get everyone closer into nature, going further and farther into these areas. We are really spontaneous and get off the ship as much as possible. What was really neat on one of my trips to Antarctica is we were in the bar after a great dinner hearing a bar talk with one of our expedition team members and sitting around just like this with some drinks. And the marine biologist came on the loudspeaker and said, ladies and gentlemen, anyone who wants a third excursion today, grab your parkas, grab your boots, come on down. Some people stayed in the bar. They were exhausted. They just enjoyed their glass of wine. A lot of guests came down and we saw 40 crab eater seals gathering krill at sunset. And this is something that the marine biologist hadn't seen in 17 years of him traveling with us. And so he was excited to see it and he wanted all of our guests like you to see it as well. So that's just an example of how much we can get off the ship and quickly on our small little vessels. So a lot is included in your trip to Antarctica. For instance, the flight seeing on the ultramarine. Uh, so when you're going with Jackie, maybe in this December, um, flight seeing is included. We have Zodiac cruising, lots of levels of hiking, the polar plunge. Who would do the polar plunge? Yeah, okay. <laughs> In the cold waters. But then we have a lot of added additional adventure options. So the biking is actually in Greenland. We have heli biking in Greenland. But for Antarctica, we have great options like heli landings on the trip that Jackie's doing for an additional cost, heli trekking. Um, we have camping. We have, this is a sea kayaking program. So if you like paddling, I know a lot of people from Southern Ontario, or you might be thinking of a friend to bring with you that may like to kayak. So we have a full kayaking program where it's 12 to 16 guests and we have a specific guide and it is an additional cost, um, but because we supply all the um, personal flotation devices, the wetsuits, and even the dry sacks to put cameras in and things like that. But I love doing this one, just the paddling one time only. It is an additional cost. But it's fun. It's an inflatable kayak. We actually took some of these before we started offering this program up to Muskoka and actually see, we were got like six or seven of us on, his, on these to see how stable they were in the polar regions. So if you maybe wanted to paddle once and just to see what it's like to experience the pristineness of, of paddling in the polar regions, um, that is also an option. But then we have stand-up paddle boarding in Antarctica. And I've never stand up paddle boarded before. I, I think I tried it once up in Collingwood and I just got a little, okay, this isn't for me. But Artie, one of our stand up paddle boarding guides is from Victoria, from Tofino actually, the west coast of British Columbia. And he said, 
that 70% of our guests that's paddled with him have never stand up paddle boarded before and they try and do it in Antarctica. And so it's remarkable if, you know, people want to do it, you never know what the spirit moves someone to do uh, in the polar region. So groups of 10 uh, go out for stand up paddle boarding. But then we have camping, which is also offered on um, Jackie's trip. Um, so camping for one night on the continent, if you are wanting to do that. Um, one advisor had their um, clients book their 25th wedding anniversary out on the ice. <laughs> they said after 25 years of marriage, putting up a tent in Antarctica was the biggest testament to their <laughs> marriage. <laughs> so sleeping next to the penguins cooing in the background. And it's um, a lot of daylight when we're going to Antarctica. So there's only a few hours of darkness um, under the stars. So great for photographers. I don't know if any of you are photographers, but there's the polar plunge that is included with every trip. Such a highlight. And if you don't decide to do it at the last minute, you'll have just as much fun uh, watching everyone else. Uh, depending on where we are, it ranges from uh, minus two to plus two, um, uh, depending on, on where we are. Five degrees, yeah. Because um, it is salt water, so with salt water being able to freeze at a lower temperature. So I'll mention two of our ships. Um, this is our ultramarine that Jackie's going to be traveling on in December. And she is our beautiful brand new vessel that I'm so proud of. I remember seeing the plans and the prints about seven years ago with her and having her actually materialize and having such great feedback from passengers that are on board is just remarkable. And what's neat about her is if you can notice the stern, uh, at the aft, there's a great platform. So you can just get right in and out of the Zodiacs. We were chatting about kayaking earlier too. You can get right in and out of the kayaks. We also have a disembarkation point on, this, on the, uh, on the um, port side and starboard as well. And we have 20 Zodiacs on board and quickly deploying. We have a great hangar that is actually quickly and safely deploys the ultramarine Zodiacs. So you can get off the ship even faster than any other vessel. It's really exciting. There's nothing worse than being all wrapped up in your parka waiting to get out and you're all hot and heavy waiting on, on the ship to get off and being hot and stuffy. Uh, so I love the fact that especially with the ultramarine, we can get everyone off the ship even faster. And then we have two twin engine helicopters operating from two heli decks. So we can access so many farther and further destinations in Antarctica with our two helicopters. So we have two heli decks um, on her with some great heli operations. So again, on um, the trip that Jackie's going on, we not only have the flight sightseeing that's included, but if you wanted to participate in an added activity like heli landing, that's available as well as heli trekking, so going for a little uh, trek um, in Antarctica. We have exceptional dining, just because it's an expedition, I used to kind of think, oh my gosh, hot dogs and, and hamburgers. And yes, there are definitely fun days where we have a fun barbecue out on deck on a nice sunny day, but the dining is exceptional. It's great cuisine on board, uh, great uh, meals that you can choose from at each sitting. Sometimes in breakfast, we'll have buffet, but you can still order you know, poached eggs or an actual uh, dish of your choice. So great dining experience. We also have a mud room, a ready room on the ultramarine. So when you're coming back from a landing, you can just put your parka in your own locker and your boots so you don't have to carry all that back to your gorgeous cabin. Um, and so it's nice and kept there for you um, until you come back. I always say don't forget to remove the liner because it's nice to be able to have the liner when you're in a dining room and you might get interrupted for, uh, during a meal because wildlife's out um, or some gorgeous iceberg um, that we may interrupt a meal for. And so it's nice to be able to uh, have your liner. So if you wanted to jump out on deck or get out on your balcony, um, that's an option too. If you're thinking about going, but you don't have anyone to travel with because they don't want to go to Antarctica, we do have solo cabins available on the Ultramarine. Um, but we also have gorgeous Explorer Suites uh, with uh, great windows, beautiful, spacious areas. But then we also have balcony suites, um, deluxe suites. We were chatting earlier about uh, penthouse suites. So the Ultramarine is a phenomenal home base to explore and get off the ship as much as possible in Antarctica, but still come back to incredible um, creature comforts uh, when you come back from an excursion.
There's also a spa on board. So when you're booking through Jackie, you get a $250 US per person onboard ship credit or a $320 Canadian per person one. You can use it for a spa treatment or you can use it in the bar or the polar boutique. Uh, beer and wine is included with all the meals. All the meals are also included throughout the voyage. Snacks, you'll never go hungry. I'll come home from a trip and I'll think, where's my cheese plate before my dinner? Where is all this now? <laughs> it's incredible food. There is a gym on board too, a great gym. So for people who want still, um, I know someone was training for a marathon. Um, so uh, the advisor had asked if um, there's a great gym on board because they wanted to keep fit that way in Antarctica. And there most certainly is. The experience on a helicopter, it was fantastic. You can really understand the dimension of the place, how vast and big it is. Ultramarine is designed to go further and access places we haven't been to before. The very foundation of that build is its aviation capability and two aircraft and the purpose-built helidex that are on top of the ship. The Airbus H145 is an extremely modern aircraft, extremely safe, extremely capable, which make it the best aircraft for the job. The helicopter was amazing. You get a totally different view and it was absolutely beautiful. The scale of our helicopter operations is unlike any other company in the industry. We're also utilizing the aircraft to offer exclusive additional options that allow you to engage a smaller, more intimate environment in this landscape. We have options that are tailored for ourselves. It's given me a chance to try different things with the best equipment, with the most knowledge. These people are on the top of their game. Fork expedition gave me the chance to see Antarctica from the sky, from the seaside, and also from the land. That video just came out last week, so I was really excited to share it with all of you. But we also have the World Explorer, a gorgeous premium vessel, all uh, suites, all balconies, uh, only 172 guests. So when I mentioned the Antarctic Express trip, which we do have some brochures for that as well. Again, if you're short on time, but still really want to go to Antarctica, this is a great vessel as well. She doesn't have any helicopters, um, but she has gorgeous, gorgeous suites um, with balconies um, and beautiful, beautiful bathrooms. Oh my gosh, I love dogs so much. This is so hard for me. Um, and great dining experiences as well on the World Explorer, a beautiful spa. Um, so you're still getting your shipboard credit on the uh, World Explorer as well. And she does a lot of great itineraries like the Crossing the Circle trip as well as a 20 day Falkland, South Georgia, Antarctica trip. So lots of choices too. Um, if you don't end up traveling on the ultramarine uh, with Jackie, just because in terms of uh, itineraries that you're wanting to choose from, the World Explorer is still an incredible <laughs> vessel. And I did wanna talk a little bit about our sustainability. Um, we've developed the Polar Promise back in 2019 it's actually a public sustainability report. And one thing that I'm even more proud of with Cork is our partnerships and engagements in communities that we go into, for instance, in the Canadian Arctic or Greenland, but also partnerships um, in South Georgia that we've created in Antarctica. And really what our goal is, is to have people come back as polar ambassadors from these areas, because I personally came back shifted and changed thinking, What's one thing that I can do to help this world become a better place and protect these beautiful areas of our planet? And so we have an amazing sustainability program. And really, it's all about protecting this area um, for the next generation that comes after us and this beautiful earth that we have. So incredible experiences, but all in the nature. Um, and it's really, for me, being with this company for so long, and when people are seeing these areas, if you do travel to the polar regions, you do come back. It's just one of the most remarkable places on the planet. And it's so remote. And we need these little vessels to be able to maneuver in these areas because some of these areas, you don't have things like snowmobiles to get around or cars. So it's definitely a way to travel on small ships. Even if you haven't been on a ship before, this is a great mode of transportation to be able to maneuver in really remote places on the planet. 
So that's just a little bit about Antarctica. It's literally the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so thank you so much for letting me share a little bit about what CORC has to offer in the polar regions and share some of my personal stories with you. Um, do you have any questions? How many helicopters? Great question. On the Ultramarine, nine on each helicopter. Yeah, and then and then the pilot. And and to Kara's point about the helicopter, everyone's guaranteed for the flight seeing, right? It's not it's not only if you pay for doing an optional excursion. It's included for every guest if people want to. Yeah. Now there are a small number of people who are afraid of helicopters. Yes, but, you're right. You know, yeah. but certainly if you want to, it's an option. Yeah. And I guess you know. To, to your point earlier about um, what people do and why they'd want to go there, it's the people who are interested in seeing everything and, and doing more. And I guess I appreciate that everyone is a traveler in this room that really wants to sort of explore. And it is sort of uncharted, the idea that you don't know what's going to happen. And that level of spontaneity and surprise is sort of the reason why I'm so keen for it. So I know we filled you with a lot of information tonight, but I encourage you guys to reach out if you have questions or other um, information you'd like to know, because I'm happy to help tailor a voyage that might make sense, you know, if, exactly. if this December doesn't make sense. You might on the weekend be thinking about it and have a question for Jackie. So yeah. Jackie and I speak regularly. So anytime that you have a question for Jackie, just please reach out to her or you want to call with me and Jackie together um, or share some more details of a particular itinerary or, or some questions that you might have. Um, we're here working together. Any other questions, guys? Anything else? Yeah, please, Robin. Any scuba diving opportunities on your... Great question. Um, unfortunately, with court expeditions uh, at this time, no. Um, I looked. We looked into it a few years back, actually, because it is a great question and a lot of inquiries for that and something like snorkeling. Um, but the insurance and the liability is too great. So um, the insurance is so high and the risk, uh, especially leopard seals in Antarctica, a lot of divers have encountered um, really scary situations with some leopard seals for instance or or orcas that are a little bit hungrier than other than others so <laughs> hungry uh, is not an animal i want to meet <laughs> so that is why we, that's why we've steered that's why we've steered again um, away from it uh, for at this time so things like uh, stand up paddle boarding and paddling we know um that that's a great safe way of with our support team of being able to have guests have some certain adventure options that they might not be able to get um, but though diving at this time, no. Great question, though. Thanks for asking. Two things I'll share as well, just FYI, is that Quark just launched their season through to 2025. So there are so many opportunities for people to plan ahead for it. Sometimes part of the anticipation of a trip is knowing that you're going to be going eventually and sort of building up to that. And one of the reasons why Jamie and I chose as adventurers to go in December is that the camping, I know that some people grimaced when they saw that. That's like an essential must do for me. Like I must sleep on that ice, even if it's broad daylight and just feel like I've done that once. And so I really, uh, that's an early season thing. And yeah. so my role as an advisor is to help you choose when might be the best time to go. Mm -hmm. And for us to know that, you know, essentially is camping, essentially is a helicopter. If those are factors, that's how I answer questions for people the most when I have conversations about polar. It's like, what are you there for? Is it for baby penguins? There's a time for that, you know? So, yes, yeah, Jamie? Just hearing some of the laughs are about the camping in the day, like, do you have blackout curtains for camping? <laughs> yeah, you could just make a little <laughs> yeah. You can invest in a really nice eye mask. <laughs> yes. You can look like you're at the spa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blackout curtains on the ship, but not yet. Yeah, not in <laughs> not the, the, the... Not on the bivy bags and the bivouac sacks and the yeah. tents, no. Okay, guys, thank you again for coming. Thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you to Kara for oh, sharing thank you. this. It's and thank you everyone at home. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. Awesome. Maybe I will sneak over to this. And end this slide. Yeah, so in that time, usually the sun.